Siddhartha Mukherjee, The Emperor of All Maladies, A Biography of Cancer Welcome to the summary of The Emperor of All Maladies, A Biography of Cancer by Siddhartha Mukherjee. This book unveils a captivating and informative journey exploring the history, causes, and treatments of cancer. Through this summary, you will discover the evolution of cancer theories, from the ancient concept of black bile to modern cellular theory, and gain insights into the various factors that can induce the development of cancerous cells. The book also highlights historical milestones in cancer therapies, including the roles of surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation, as well as the groundbreaking efforts of pioneers in cancer research such as Sidney Farber and Mary Lasker. The Evolution of Cancer Theories Theories on cancer-causing agents have evolved throughout history. Hippocrates believed an imbalance of the body's four fluids led to illnesses and personality problems. The first known theory of cancer, developed by Galen in CE 160, attributed the disease to an entrapment of black bile. However, autopsy results refuted this theory. Scientists then turned to external agents like miasmas, worms, fungal spores, and protozoa as possible causes of cancer until the 1926 Nobel Prize winner Johannes Feibiger was proven wrong for believing roundworms caused stomach cancer. Today, cancer is understood as a complex disease with various causes. The Origin and Danger of Cancer Cells Rudolf Fierko's cellular theory revolutionized the way we understand cancer. He discovered that cancer tissue is composed of our own cells and explained that cancer cells are unique in their ability to replicate endlessly and never age or self-destruct. Cancer cells have mutated growth genes, and they replicate without any signal, making them indestructible enemies. Our understanding of cancer today acknowledges that it arises from within our bodies, but external factors can also induce it. The Deadly Reality of Chimney Sweeping in Georgian England, young boys who worked as chimney sweeps were dying from scrotal cancer caused by soot. Percival Pott hypothesized that everyday substances like soot, asbestos, heavy metals, and benzene can induce cancer by altering DNA and disrupting the immune system. Mutagens can alter the genes of a normal cell, transforming it into a cancer cell that multiplies uncontrollably. Certain toxins found in heavy metals and benzene can also disrupt the immune system, allowing malignant cells to spread. While we need to be aware of these chemicals, cancer can also arise from infections. The link between infections and cancer. Infections can lead to cancer in humans in two ways, indirectly by causing chronic inflammation that increases cancer risk, or directly by altering a cell's DNA. This connection was first discovered in chickens by virologist Peyton Rouse when he found that tumors could be transmitted through a virus. However, most cancers do not arise from infections, so there's no need to worry about getting cancer from a handshake. Factors that increase your risk of cancer The risk of cancer can increase with exposure to radiation, the presence of specific genes, and the body's own hormones acting as growth signals. Radiation can damage DNA, potentially leading to mutations and cancer. Mutated genes, such as BRCA1, can prevent the repair of damaged DNA. Additionally, the presence of estrogen can increase the growth rate of cancerous cells. These three factors can combine to cause cancer. However, they can also be used to fight the disease. In the past, cancer therapy meant drastic surgery and inflexible procedures. However, scientific breakthroughs have led to unique treatments that work with the body's natural defenses. A Brief History of Cancer Treatment Cancer treatment has come a long way since 500 BCE. The first approach to fighting cancer with surgery was to remove the primary tumor. Surgery can also prevent cancer by removing tissues such as colon polyps and certain moles, before they become malignant. However, anesthesia and hygiene were lacking in ancient times, and patients often died from infections. Modern reliable anesthetics and antiseptics were discovered in the 19th century. Surgeons started to treat cancer with increasingly radical means, such as removing the entire breast, 
as well as the lymph nodes and muscles necessary to move the hand and shoulder. While these procedures helped prevent local recurrences of cancer, they were useless if the cancer had spread to other organs. Understanding Chemotherapy Chemotherapy is an effective treatment for cancer that damages parts of DNA to stop cell division. It attacks all cells, but normal cells can regenerate while cancer cells die. Different types of chemotherapy, such as nitrogen mustard and antimetabolites, work by disrupting the important functions of cancer cells, halting their growth. Chemotherapy is an essential aspect of cancer treatment, as surgical procedures are limited in eradicating blood cancers, including leukemia. It also proves indispensable in the elimination of rapidly spreading tumor cells. By reducing cancer cells in lymph nodes, bone marrow, and blood, chemotherapy drug derivatives like nitrogen mustard aid in the treatment of leukemia. The primary function of chemotherapy is to damage the parts of DNA responsible for cell multiplication. The process of affecting all cells, especially cancer cells that have the most multiplication, stops cancer cell growth without repairing DNA damage. Antimetabolites mimic cell nutrients, such as folate, to disrupt vital cell replication functions in cancer cells. By mimicking these nutrients, antiphalates specifically stop DNA replication, thereby halting cell division and impeding the growth of cancer. Chemotherapy's diverse range of drugs peculiar to different cancer types and stages all halt the endless replication of cancer cells. Therefore, it remains a vital tool for eradicating or reducing cancer cell-related damages and enhancing the well-being of cancer patients. Radiation Therapy for Cancer Treatment Radiation therapy uses controlled rays to eliminate cancer cells in areas that are inoperable. It is effective in preventing relapse, especially for acute lymphoblastic leukemia that may spread to the brain. Radiotherapy can also be combined with surgery when removing tumors in critical regions of the brain is not an option. Although radiotherapy may cause side effects such as sickness, fatigue, and hair loss, it is a viable option that greatly reduces the likelihood of a relapse. Radiation therapy fights cancer for the same reason it can cause it, damaging DNA. The controlled use of highly intense rays directs the radiation destructiveness towards cancer cells only, making radiotherapy a crucial part of cancer treatment for many patients. The Father and Mother of Modern Cancer Treatment In the 1940s, Sidney Farber, a pathologist, discovered that antiphalates could be used to treat leukemia, positioning him as the father of modern chemotherapy. Alongside his compassionate approach to cancer treatment, Farber established children's cancer research and raised substantial funds but sought support to promote his cause. Enter Mary Lasker, a businesswoman whose advertising expertise and revived American Cancer Society was just what Farber needed. Their two decades of brilliant cooperation culminated in the National Cancer Act, granting them a vital $1.5 billion in research funds and our current understanding of cancer. Although they missed out on significant basic research exploring certain altered genes' role in cancer, their legacy remains critical to modern cancer treatments. The Emperor of All Maladies, a biography of cancer, provides a thorough overview of our understanding of cancer, offering an extensive account of the progression of cancer research and treatment throughout history. The book outlines the shifts in cancer theories, from the time of Hippocrates to modern cellular understanding, and highlights the critical factors influencing cancer development. Furthermore, it explains the role of surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation in treating cancer and emphasizes the importance of pioneers like Farber and Lasker in advancing cancer research. By grasping these central concepts, the reader gains a comprehensive understanding of cancer and its effects on human life.